Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this begins chapter four of College Algebra at College of the Sequoias. Uh, chapter four is on exponential functions and logarithms. Just exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Uh, there's a segue though. Since exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other, 4.1 goes over and recaps inverse functions. So let's talk about 4.1. It's a fairly short section. So as we recall, a function, if something's a function, it means for every x, there is one y. Or in, in normal English, each input has only one output. This is kind of handy. Uh, picture going to a vending machine and putting in your money and each thing has a code and like B3, you expect it to give you uh, Cheez-Its, but all of a sudden it decides there's another option instead of Cheez-Its and it pumps out Twizzlers and you hate Twizzlers. So having two outputs for one input leads to some variability that people don't like. It's, it's nice to know if you put something in, you know exactly what you're getting back. And so that's why we like functions so much. Uh, for a graphically, functions pass the vertical line test. And so let's take a look at, a, at the vertical line test. We've got our Cartesian coordinate system, x, y. We've got our graph right here, and it does something like this. If I can make vertical lines and it only crosses our green line, our actual function once, this passes the vertical line test. That's what makes it a function. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit more with that picture, but I want to write that out in words. The vertical line test. Every vertical line only crosses the function line once. The function curve once. If it passes, it's a function. If it passes this test, it's a function. Okay, we do have another test. The other test we have is called the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test does the same thing, except horizontal line. If a curve passes the horizontal line test as well, we say this function is one to one. That's the official jargon. Does it pass a horizontal line test? Down here it does. But this line right here, there's several lines fail horizontal. So not every function is one to one.
what a one-to-one -one function means if a function is one-to-one. -one. Then we earlier we said every x has a y, but then also for every y, there is just one x. What this means is you can't get the same output from two different inputs. Okay, uh, let's go back to our vending machine analogy. You know when you're at like a, a, a drink machine, sometimes you, there's six different spots where there's bottled water, uh, there's Starbucks, Frappuccino drinks, five of them lead you to the vanilla one, six of them lead you to mocha. So you can select multiple inputs and still get the same output. That's the idea of one-to-one. -one. Uh, that situation violates it. But if you go to a vending machine where every single spot in the vending machine has a different item and there's no way to get Cheez-Its in by like saying B3 and A6, then it's one-to-one. -one. And that leads to a whole bunch of other properties as well. Uh, but that's for later on in calculus and stuff like that. Some things pass all of these every time. Look at f of x equals mx plus b, a line. The only lines that are not one to one are vertical lines or horizontal lines. Pause for a second and let you jot that down. So let's look at, let's just look at a line real quick. We've got y equals 2x plus 4. That's my y, this is my x. Crosses at 4. It's got a slope of 2, so rise 2, run 1. Now, if we look at this, this, this line is always increasing. And I could draw a line that has a negative slope and it would always be decreasing. So a negative slope is always decreasing. A function that is always increasing or always decreasing, where there's no mix, is one to one. If we go back to chapter three, we were looking at uh, polynomials, a general polynomial. For f of x equals ax to the n with no other terms, just a single term. A 
If n is odd, it's one to one. Look at x cubed and x to the fifth. x, like we have here. If n is odd, it's one to one. If n is even, it's not. So picture like y equals x cubed versus y equals x squared. y equals x squared passes the vertical line test, but it does not pass the horizontal line test. Okay. Uh, let's proceed. Get my board set up just right, can be a pain. There we go. That gives me a little bit more room between my lamp and my uh, tablet. Let's take a look at like a square root function. F of X equals the square root of 16 minus X squared. This is like saying y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared. If I squared both sides and I add x squared to the other side, this is the equation of a circle, a radius four. Centered at the origin. I don't know that we've covered circles yet, but we definitely will. Uh, but th that would be this function, right? This, that, well, not this function. Circles are not functions. That would be something like this, where that's four, that's four, that's negative four, that's negative four. However, f of x equals the square root of 16 minus x squared is always positive. So we're really only looking at the top half. It can't be negative. The circle is the whole thing. F of x is only the top half. And you'll notice it does pass a vertical line test as long as we don't have the bottom half. It does not pass a horizontal line test though. Passes vertical, but fails horizontal. Another way to look at that is take a look, evaluate f of four and f of negative four. In both cases, we plug them in. And we get zero. Two inputs lead to one output. That fails the horizontal line test. Okay, let's keep going. So one-to-one -one functions, have inverse functions. If the function is f of x, the inverse function is called f negative one of x like that. 
and it's an entirely different function. We'll call it g of x. The negative one is not an exponent. Written as such, it indicates inverse. Inverse of f. Uh, sometimes you have to restrict the domain. You may have to you may have to restrict the domain of a function to make it one to one. And when you get to trigonometry, this you'll see this in trigonometry. This happens all the time for trig functions. This is a necessity for trig functions. Now, so we have f of x and we have g of x, which is the inverse. We got f of x and we've got g of x, which is the inverse of f. There is an easy test to see if two functions are inverses. And it has to do with taking the composite functions. If we can do fog x or f of g of x, as a reminder, that means take g of x and put it inside f of x. If that equals x and we do it the other way, g of f of x equals g with f of x put inside, that equals x, they are inverses. That's an algebraic approach. If you're more of a visual learner, how do we identify inverses from a graph? Uh, so graphically, f of x and f inverse of x are reflections of each other across the y equals x line. Take a look at an example. We have f of x equals 2x plus 5, g of x equals 1 half x minus 5. Are they inverses? Let's try the algebraic approach first. So f of g of x, we take g of x and put it inside for x. This leads to 2 times 1 half x is x, 2 times negative 5 halves is negative 5 halves plus 5. This leads to x plus 5 halves, which is not just x. So no. Look at it on Desmos.
So we got y equals x. We'll make that our line of reflection. y equals 2x plus 5. And y equals 0.5x minus 5. They are not reflections across each other. If they are, they will intersect where they cross y equals x. And if we go the same distance from the red line, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that dotted so it stands out. These are not inverses. Graphically, we can see it. They do, like this distance from here to here is really small. But if we go the other direction, it's a little bit bigger. It even becomes more obvious. Well, it's less obvious out there, actually. It's easy to see that this distance here is small, much smaller than that distance. OK, uh, so that didn't work. Let's try. Keep f of x the same. Why don't you guys try g of x equals 1 half x minus 5 halves? Pause the video for a second. See if you can do it algebraically and graphically. OK, so we plug it in. We'll plug G into F. So fog X is 2 times 1 half X minus 5 halves plus 5. We distribute, we get x minus 5 plus 5, which equals x. Then we'll do Goff or g of f of x. Now we've got 1 half and we stick in 2x plus 5. This equals x plus 5 halves minus 5 halves, which is also x. These are inverses. Uh, and let's look at it on Desmos. And I'll say C Desmos up here too. So turn that into 2.5. And now, look, you can see they're not only the reflections, but they cross right here. And if we go each dis the same distance from each side, they look the same. It looks like a reflection across, like y equals x is a mirror. So let's just put it in, let's draw it in our notes so we have something in our notes. So 2x plus 5. Oops, a little bit higher. How far that down does it take to until they cross? They cross at 5, negative 5, negative 5. That's where they cross. And we've got one half x minus five halves.
is a rise of one, a run of two. And we've got our line of reflection right here. And graphically, if I've done this right, if I, if I had a good picture, this distance here would be like, let's say C, and the same distance here would be C also. Now, we can see it on Desmos, we can see it here. Looks like I did it a little bit bad. This should have crossed right there. This point is zero five. This point is five zero. This point is negative one three right here. And this point right there is three, negative one. Where we're going with this is if the point or coordinate AB is on F of X, then the point or coordinate BA is on F inverse. which gives us a handy way to graph inverses. This is a handy way to graph inverses. If you have coordinates for f of x, swap x's and y's and you now have coordinates for f of inverse of x. Almost done. This is a short lesson. So how can we find how can we find inverse functions? If f of x is one to one, how do we find f inverse of x? So finding inverse functions. Step one, replace f of x with y. Two, swap or interchange x's and y's. Then we'll solve for the new y. And finally, replace y with f inverse of x. It's important to note f of x must be one to one.
f of x equals the absolute value of x has no inverse. So we're going to, we'll do an example together and then I want you to do an example. Or if you're feeling especially bold, you will try both. Pause the video and try both before we do it. Let's set it up. The first one we'll do, f of x equals 4x minus 7. I'll pause in case you want to pause it and try. Okay. So step one, we replace f of x with y. Then we interchange x's and y's. x equals 4y minus 7. I add 7 to both sides and I get x plus 7 equals 4y. I divide both sides by 4 and I get y equals x plus 7 over 4. If you like, 1 fourth x plus 7 fourths. And finally, we replace f inverse of x with y. Okay. Here's an example for you to try. G of X equals uh, X to the fifth power minus two. Don't let the fact that it's g of x throw you off. It still represents a function. We'll replace that with y. Then we'll swap them. And we'll solve. I add 2 to both sides. I get x plus 2 equals y to the fifth. And then I'll take the fifth root on both sides. I get the fifth root of x plus 2 equals y. And finally, we replace y with f inverse, or not f inverse, g inverse, because the initial function was g. And that's all there is to inverses, folks. This was a short lecture. I'll get ready. I'm going to do 4.2 next and 4.3. See what we can get done today. Peace. Stop sharing and stop the recording. Have a good day.